And ironically, one of the, the things that can give you the best opportunity to move up an organizational um, hierarchy is leading from where you are because those around you see those traits and they're like, mm. this person is displaying so leadership traits. We need to move them into a, for a more formal leadership position. Delighted to be here on a beautiful sunny day in Sydney and with a couple of my great mates, Tony Hughes and Ken McLaughlin. Hey, John. Hi, John. How are you? Hey, guys, I want to address the subject of sales management, particularly getting new sales management into a role mm -hmm. and, and what, what's involved in doing that. I know, Tony, you often talk about sales management being the weak link in the revenue chain. Yep. And this, so this is absolutely critical to the success of organisations, but also from a career point of view for individuals coming up from yeah. a sales role into a sales management role. Tell me, how do we make that successful? Well, think for me in my career, I don't know about you guys, but I um, you know, got a job in sales, got promoted to sales manager, <laughs> decided to change to an industry that paid more money and went back to be a sales rep again, mm -hmm. then got promoted to sales manager, then changed industry again to a better paying industry as a sales rep, became manager, became MD. So I've made the transition myself quite a few times, and I think it's a really tough transition. Mm, it is. And I think... I think the skills and attributes that make you a successful seller can potentially work against you in a management or leadership role. Yeah. They're not necessarily yeah. the same skills, are they? Well, I just no. think it's fascinating that you kept going back I to, did. To, I did. to repping. You're like, <laughs> look, I don't want all the hassle. I don't want all the noise. It's just true. let me focus on on you know making my number and helping my customers and do it and have control over everything that's in my environment. And, and I that's think that's true. a really, I mean, there's so many, so many different aspects to this. One is how to do it well, but, but two is whether to do it at all. I because know. because there's this sort of expectation that, oh, well, if I'm a successful salesperson, mm. I must make the leap or the transition into sales management because otherwise I'm not progressing my career. But actually, I think that's, that's a fallacy. Yes, you can do that, but you're not obliged yeah. to do that. You can continue to have an incredibly successful sales career without making that transition, but that do that as a decision rather than, yeah. you know, just as a, as a glass ceiling that you can't break through. So I think that's one aspect. But the other thing for me is, I think, is, is, is the difference between management and leadership, right? Mm. And I think it's a really, really important thing because you can lead from wherever you are in, in an organization. You don't need to have manager on your business card or MD on your business card. You have, we all have the capacity to lead in, in the roles that we do. And I don't mean that to sound sort of flippant or that's like... Because it, 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 it's influence. It it's is. Influence. It, that's yeah. exactly right. And ironically, one of the, the things that can give you the best opportunity to move up an organizational um, hierarchy is leading from where you are because those around you see those traits and they're like, mm. this person is displaying so leadership traits. We need to move them into a, for a more formal leadership position. But, but just hitting your numbers and then jumping into sales management <clears throat> can be a real trap. And it, not only for you, not only for your career, but for the people that you end up managing because you, know, you haven't been given the, the skills or the training to, to, to help you be successful in that role. It's a much more expensive mistake than hiring the wrong salesperson, in fact. For the organisation. For the yeah. organisation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Massive but it's also a massive mistake for the individual. Yeah. That can that can really destroy their confidence. Uh, now they've got to take the step back to a salesperson yeah. if they feel that's yeah. the right thing to yeah. do. It, it it really is a very bad mistake if if it's a wrong person in the wrong role. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's it's absolutely essential that you do all that research, you think about the individual, and again it's what the leadership traits, in my case, I got promoted into management because for exactly that reason, the company said I was a salesperson. I was coaching all these young salespeople huh. just because I loved yeah. doing it yeah. and I was getting a kick out of seeing them be successful and so on. So next minute they said, all right, you're in sales management now. And, and, and I had a really wise guy who said, don't change your behavior. Right? Wow. Right? Wow. You, are, you are listening, you are coaching, you are not telling. And, yeah. and, and that's important. That transition across in fact i think we should talk about what you do in the first month what you do in the first three months mm. uh, and, and to okay. me the key yeah. issue or the key opportunity is just listen i agree and i so there's a couple of things i think being promoted from amongst your peers mm. is very problematic yep. <laughs> so um and I'll, but often it's hard to go get the opportunity by leaving the organization and going somewhere else because you have no you, you have no track record but i just want to keep back in on something that you said mm. which was bang on the money that was the thing I found is I got promoted and I went from having this awesome lifestyle. I was making incredible money, enjoying what I was doing, 
had a lot of respect internally, had a lot of freedom mm. and lifestyle because your boss doesn't really care where you are if you're just consistently delivering your numbers and performing. Yeah. And then you go become a manager and it's like the reward for being a, doing a good job as a manager is more crap to deal with. Yeah. Like they just keep loading you up with more and more problems. Make right. that the truth. And, um, and I just found you have a much better lifestyle as a seller. So I'd, I'd caution everybody watching this to think twice about the notion I'm a successful seller now. I've got to go be a manager. I, like I, I definitely really challenge. So can that. I just share a quick story? You yeah. both talked about your careers and being promoted. I want to share a story about not being promoted. So I was working for an organisation and I got passed over for, for promotion. And ultimately, the reason I got passed over for, for promotion was that the number I was contributing was so significant to the person I was contributing <laughs> to. They couldn't afford. They it. couldn't afford for me to to yeah. be moved uh, out of that role, which I found out subsequently. But then I had a very interesting conversation with a senior leader in that business, who sat me down. Not not a person I knew well at all. Sat me down and said, "Keen, I think you're coasting. I think you're coasting in the business." And and I said, "I'm hitting my numbers. I'm doing this." He said, "I'm aware of all that. I'm I'm across the numbers. I still think you're coasting." And I said, "Yeah, you're right. I am." And he said, so tell me why. And I said, well, I got passed over for this, for this role. And he said, so one person passes you over for a role and you throw up your hands and decide, well, you know, oh, I'm going to start coasting. It, it, you know, when did you give up responsibility for your career to that individual? And I was like, well, I don't remember doing that intentionally, but obviously I have done. So the feedback he gave me was, and it goes back to something you said previously, John. He said, look, you're, you're working in a very large organization. There's going to be lots of problems. Those problems can equate to opportunities. You're talking to people in positions of leadership. Come to us with a business plan. Find the opportunity. Demonstrate that you're the best person to, to address that opportunity and create a role for yourself rather than just you know, sticking to the, you know, the organizational hierarchy of, of um, moving up the food chain. And that just was like a light bulb going on in my head. It never occurred to me that you could actually just create these roles, find opportunities yeah. and create them and go and have a chat with someone, make a business case, you know, sell the value of it and actually get the gig. Um, so, that, so that goes to your point. Don't just adhere to the, the, the natural order of, of progression because there's actually a whole lot of ways to skin that career cut. Love that. Okay, let's, let's talk about we have been selected to go become a manager. Yeah. What are the attributes you need? Yeah. Well, what one of the attributes you need, in in the first, yeah, you know, when you first get in the role, what should you do? How should you behave? Um, because one of the things I find, and I'm going to half answer the question yeah. here, is people start saying I'm the manager now, so they start managing and forgetting to lead. Yeah. And yeah. that's more important for me that they provide leadership capability and skills than management in that yeah. first instance. What do you think? I agree with that. Um, there's a couple of really important things for me, so I agree with that completely. Um, the other things are we need to recognise that as an individual contributor, you're hardwired to be fairly self-centred. Mm. You know, it is about mm -hmm. you and your success, although you should be all about your customers and their success, but but you are wired to, to, to go and be successful for you. Um, as a manager, it's got to be all about the team and not about you anymore. Mm. So, so good managers, I think, are good servants. You know, they they serve their team, they serve the organisation. Like good leaders. Yeah, the, mm. the, the 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 same as good leaders. I think a good manager's also got much more humility than typically a seller will have. So, I think they need to dial back the chest beating and ego and be more humble yeah. and more thoughtful. But they also need to be more disciplined and focus very much on process. And typically, sellers don't focus a lot on process. Yep. There's a lot more intuition in how they're going and being successful. Mm. So, um, so go from self-centered to team-centered, and from being intuitive in how you operate to far more disciplined around process. Um, I'm a huge fan of Jason Jordan and his book Cracking the Sales Management Code. Code he he yeah. co-authored that with Michelle. Um, but in that book, he just makes the point that we can't manage results. All we can do is manage mm. the activities mm -hmm. that feed into objectives that then create results. Yep. And and a manager's got to be disciplined about how they help go drive the right activities with their team. Yeah, activities and behavior. Yeah. So what I'd add is when, when I first made the transition into management, something I consciously did was reflect on the really good managers I'd, I'd worked for mm. in the past and tried to sort of nail down some of the traits that they had. Um, what, what were they? Well, so there was a couple of things. So um, they, they were really good communicators. 
So, you know, you, yep. there wasn't, they didn't leave a lot of stuff unsaid. They were, you know, they were quite open okay. and transparent. There was no stinky elephant yeah. sitting on the table. Yeah, prepared right? to have the hard conversations, mm. the tough yep. conversations. They gave really good air cover to their team. So they, mm. they created almost an umbrella to say, look, you go and do your stuff, right? And if, there, protect you. if there's issues, well, I'll mm. protect you, but also if there's issues or, or roadblocks or obstacles, come to me and I'll do my best to yeah. sort of remove them for you so you're not obliged to mm -hmm. do that. The other thing they did, and this was something that was really stuck with me, was if, if you're transitioning from a sales role into a sales leadership role, you know where a lot of the frustrations are in that sales role. Yeah. Things that feel like admin for the sake of admin, you know, 50 forecast calls a week, all of these <laughs> other things. So you have the capacity to actually hone in on some of those things and say, I'm going to address that. I'm going to address that because I know. So mm -hmm. we talk about if you, if you transition as a customer into a sales role, you bring a whole lot of knowledge and DNA that you can apply to that sales role. Similarly, if you transition as a salesperson into a sales management role, you bring a whole lot of knowledge around where the problems are and where the gaps exist. So I think if you can set about trying to resolve some of those problems, get some quick wins, whilst also not kind of trying to break things just to make your, you know, make your mark, then you, you earn the right then to, to, to do yeah, some other stuff. Whereas if, particularly as you say, if you transition from being amongst peers to suddenly them reporting to you and you decide, well, I have to be seen to be, you know, not ruling with an iron fist, but really laying down the law, then you're going to ostracize your team really, really yeah. quickly. And then, you know, the high likelihood is you're the one who's going to get exited rather That's than them right. because you can't get rid of your wholesale team. I've seen it. Just get rid of your sales manager. <laughs> You've half answered this question, I think, but you raised it, uh, this, this issue earlier, Tony, and that is the sales manager amongst all these people, uh, being promoted to sales manager from a peer group, uh, and now he's managing the people yeah. that previously were peers. What are the, some of the things that a manager should do to make sure that doesn't become a critical issue? But I'm, I'm not sure I have great advice with that. I think, you know, you've just got to look at your people and the personalities and not get carried away with the fact that, you know, that you're you're now the leader. Yeah. Um, you know, so you definitely need to be humble and you need to focus on engineering great process and holding people nicely, but holding people to account yeah. for all of those inputs that will create their success. So be all about them and their success, not about you and your role as sales manager, you know, and, and removing roadblocks and all those other things. But um, you, you just need genuine humility yep. and think about it's a different type of value that I'm going to create yeah. in that role than I did as a salesperson. So trying to be the best salesperson of the team and elbowing people out of the way to close deals yeah. is a is a giant mistake. Oh, giant mistake. Yeah. yeah. Never never ever take over from your salespeople, yeah. no matter how competent they are. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. it's let them do the job and learn from that and let's talk yeah. about it afterwards. And I know it's it's hard. Yeah. But that's that's probably one so of the, the biggest challenges most The other thing I'd add, John, and I agree in, in terms of putting all that structure in place and being consistent, but then also recognizing that the people in your team are individuals and having a little bit of, you know, kind of, you know, if in, in footballing parlance, you call it man management, recognizing that they yeah. have different traits, different skills, Needs. different abilities. So if, if, if Sarah is particularly strong in one area, but maybe has some gaps in another area, you, you know, recognizing I need to support her in that way, um, but maybe Mike is different and maybe Lucy's different and not yeah. try and do a one size fits all approach. Cause if you do that, I think things fall through the cracks. So yes, yeah, have your true. systems, your processes, the things that are non-negotiable, but then recognize that, you know, there is some autonomy, there is some personalization within that and give people enough remit to actually go and do their job and do their actually, thing. And be, that, 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 actually, that's really true. Cause the thing I've seen is that you need to build emotional connection with everybody in the team and not play favourites. Yeah, yeah. Are really important. Yeah. And, and that it's one of the real challenges a lot of people have when they're first into management is they have to manage, they've yeah. got forecasts to do, they've yeah. got all the up, upwards management, and they start losing enough time to spend with the individuals. Yeah. I, I would prefer, as a new manager, to encourage people to spend the time with the individuals, even yeah. if you miss out on doing some of the things as you manage up. Yeah. Yeah, right? it's because you'll never be successful if you don't sit down with each individual and spend time yeah. doing coaching. Just asking them how do they feel? Yeah. You know, yeah, how do you feel? How are you yeah. doing? Anything I can help you with, and so on. Yeah. That's absolutely critical. But then the coaching, thirty percent of our time, I think every sales manager managing a team of salespeople need to spend of their time minimum in coaching. 